neither say thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, and I'm going to finish right here, lest thou be consumed. Let's pray. Our Father, our God, we're coming to you tonight because we know that we need you. Uh, we come to you because there's no other help that we know. Uh, it is your word that's still alive in our lives. It's your word that still makes us better. And so we pray tonight that as we approach the word, we would do it with the spirit of humility. God, I pray that you hide me behind Calvary's cross. Let my mouth do no harm to the text tonight, but let me preach and teach under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pull on the Holy Ghost now. Who is the teacher? I pray for supernatural recall of your word. Bring back to my mind every thought, every illustration, every word that you've spoken that your people need to hear tonight. I thank you for a right now tailor-made word for these ears that listen and hearts that receive. Let your will be done, and we promise to give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen. If I could tonight, I want to preach from a message entitled, Don't Look Back. Just look forward. Amen. You can, you know, feel that. Look at a neighbor, please, and tell a neighbor, neighbor, don't look back. Don't look back. Just look forward. Just look forward. That didn't even sound convincing. It didn't sound like you believe what you said. So find a neighbor that actually looks like they're still awake at eleven o'clock. Shake them if you got to, and say, neighbor, I'm talking to you, neighbor. I'm talking to you, neighbor. Don't look back. Don't look back. Yes, look forward. Yes, look forward. Put your hands together for All Jesus right, right there. As we identify the word of the Lord tonight, uh, we're living in a time uh, right now that is very similar to the backdrop of the text that we've given this evening. Uh, it was in Genesis, the 19th chapter, Brother Williams said that there, were, uh, there was a city or a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah had gotten so wicked and so evil that God tells Abraham in the 18th chapter, I'm getting ready to destroy this place. Abraham tells God, he says, God, listen, uh, but would you destroy a nation if there be righteous people there? God says, well, Abraham, I'll make a deal with you. If you can find me some righteous folk, I won't destroy you. So Abraham begins to talk to God. And he says, God, if I can give you 50 righteous, would you not destroy it? He says, cool, I'll do it for 50. He said, well, God, uh, I couldn't find 50. Can I get 40? God says, cool, I, I couldn't find 40. So he got all the way down to 10, Sister Anderson. He wasn't able to identify 10 righteous people throughout an entire nation. But God told Abraham, because Abraham, I've allowed you to have favor in my sight, I will spare those that are connected to you. Uh, we ought to be thankful tonight for the grandmas and the moms that interceded for us when we were out there in all of our mess. That God said, I won't kill them because of grandma's prayers. Oh, I'm thankful for a grandma tonight. I'm thankful for a mother tonight that was standing in the Amen. Amen. And God would say, I, I will let his life leave. Because of your intercession. So Abraham gets this deal with God. So the angels, they go in the 19th chapter, they go and they're beginning to talk to Lot. And uh, they come into the land, Evangelist Graham, when they get into the land, uh, the Bible says that men of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, had an eye for the angels. Uh, the man says, uh, oh God, who is this uh, that y'all are bringing in here? It was a spirit of homosexuality. Let me just put it out there while I'm here. Uh, if I offend you tonight, God bless you. I still love you. But the spirit of homosexuality that was so prevalent in that time has actually found its way back to prevalence today. Mm. Let me, let, let me get in trouble before I preach. Uh, when, when the spirit of homosexuality shows up, bro, Wales, uh, it causes one to not only be distracted, but to be perverted. Mm. And when perversion shows up in a person's life, their judgment goes out of the window. Now, when I begin to examine the text, I begin to see such a parallel in between the, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and the state of North Carolina. God, mm. here. And then when I saw the parallel, I said, God, you got to help me. He said, well, tonight, get me. you got to let them know this, that even though there are spirits that are prevalent in the state and in the city, all they've got to do is not look back at it. Wow, wow. God tells, he tells Lot, he says, uh, I want you to go, I want you to get all of your family, all of your kin folk, and you tell them, I'm getting ready to destroy the land. Uh, and if they simply just follow you and get out, 
uh, I'll make sure that their lives are preserved. So, so Lot goes, uh, uh, Brother Lot, he goes and uh, he tells his son-in-laws, he says, uh, listen, the angels of the Lord have told me that they get ready to destroy this place. We got to pack up. We got to go. Uh, the Bible says that his son-in-law looked at him like he was a clown. Uh, they looked at him like he had jokes and said, certainly, you don't want me to leave this place uh, when things are going the way they are. I need us to understand this, that whenever it is that we are challenged not to look back, we must understand that there must be something back there that can keep us longer than we want to stay. Mm. Yeah. Old folk used to say, you know, sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want, than you want to stay. You know, and it'll cost you more than you're willing to pay. That's what sin will do. So, so God says, I, I'm challenging you that even though I may not come to change the environment, I'm letting you know that I've empowered you, that you don't have to fall prey to the environment as long as you don't look back at it. Mm, thank you, sir. You know, I, I, I find this brush on that a lot of times people, they, they mm, I, I'm going to be controversial a little bit. They waste their time praying for stuff that God's never going to change. Mm. Mm. Heaven. Yeah, I, I'm out here tonight, so I might as well stay. Uh, you wasting time praying that God change your husband when the whole time God's trying to fix you. Mm. I got Help me, it. Jesus. Help me. Help me. Uh, but God, he ain't looking at God. said, but you don't understand. Your prayers ain't going to affect what I'm going to do with him. I'm not your prayers going to cause your outlook to change on the situation. Mm. But because we're still so connected to what's behind us, we're losing the sight that God tells us to stop looking back there. Yeah. Mm. So when we look at the text, God tells, he tells a uh, lot. He said, listen, you, you go. And uh, his son-in-law thought he was a joke. So what happens is Lot, his wife, and his daughters, they pack up and they're on their way out. The angel Lord says very clearly, he says, listen, when it is that you leave, I'm giving you one command. And that command is that no matter what you do, just don't look back. Yeah, right. Now, one of the things I used to get a little tied up in when I looked at this story, because I mean, I, I think it's pretty convenient to a lot of folk in here. We know that, that, you know, when Lot leaves his wife, she turns around and she looks back. And the Bible says that she turns into a pillar of salt because she looked back. Now, my theology used to be a little off because my thing was, God, that was a harsh penalty uh, to call Sister Lipson in somebody's life just because she turned around. But, but God showed me something tonight that I want to show us. Uh, it's not that she turned around. It was the connection she had to what she saw. Mm. So, so, so a lot of times, it's not that we're looking back at stuff. It's that we haven't let go what we should have let go of before. Right. And so it's not that the club is so enticing to me. God says you're still connected to the spirit of the club. Mm. And because the spirit is still connected, that's why I got to bring judgment. Because I'm trying to get you to understand you got to break the spiritual tie. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So, so, so it's not that God is saying you got to live in a box, you got to be a square, you can't have fun as a Christian because you can, but it's all in the spirit of how I'm doing this thing. Yeah. Mm. A lot of us are attempting, uh, a lot of the churches are attempting to bring so much of the world into the church as an attempt to draw people in. But see, the problem I have with that is when I begin to bring the world so much in the church, what am I giving the world to model after? Mm. If they can come to the church potluck and do what they want to do and call it praise dancing, what, and what kind of standard am I setting in the house of God? So let me help you understand this about Pastor Hinton. It's certain things that Brother Temple Faith Church that just ain't going to jump off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At least Bethel should have said amen. amen. Because what we're going to have is a standard that says you ain't going to come to our church and think you went to the club. Mm, that's good. That's good. Ah, oh, God help me here. I, I, at, the, at the other church, uh, being well, I had a brother, one of my elder brothers, and he had such a, uh, just an, I ain't call it art, but he had a thing against this particular gospel group. Uh, I, I, I read the females' names out. Uh, but he had a thing about this group that said, how in the world can so many people be supporting these artists when I can't tell the difference if I'm supposed to be shouting or dancing? Uh -huh. <laughs> Too deep tonight. Maybe I should say this for some this is the past. I think we talk to the people I know ain't gonna leave me. All right, but, but, uh, let me go here. So so when God tells us not to look back, he's giving us a command to do three things. See, this is my point. The Baptist preacher gonna show up, then I'm out. That was a joke. All right. Uh, three things God tells us to do. We found in, in, in this in this in this particular uh, passage scripture in Philippians chapter three. Now understand, the text told us today not to look back. Because if we look back, 
we will be consumed in the thing that we look back to. That's good. So there, there are some things in our lives, this, this is heavy, uh, but it's a good time to say it. There are some relationships you made in 2015 that God says ought not grace your life in 2016. Mm. There's some folk that you connected to in 2015 that all they want to do was get what they already got for you and from you, and they don't want nothing else from you. So God says those are the ones you've got to be willing to cut off. Mm. Amen. But I can't cut them off if I'm still taking this phone call. Ain't nobody talking to me. Uh, I can't cut them off if I'm still responding to his text. I, I, I can't cut them off if I'm still letting him FaceTime me at 2 o'clock because he said he's lonely. You better learn how to cut it off. Mm. 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 And I ain't just talking to the single folk. Out, out, out. Some of y'all married women. Some of y'all married men. Better cut off some of this late night texting. Mm. That's good. My God. I got one time to see the light come on in my bed at 2 o'clock in the morning. And the first lady over there talking about she texting somebody. I'm just texting my sister. The devil is alive. Your sister better be asleep. Amen. She better text her own husband. Y'all been talking to me. Yes, sir. So he said there are three things we got to do out of Philippians chapter 3. Yes, sir. Verses 13 and 14. Uh, the Bible says this. Paul puts it this way. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are here or before, I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, it's still in the scripture. Just because you see me read it, I promise it's still in there. So, so the three things that God tells us we've got to do in order to look forward. The first thing we got to do, we got to learn how to forget. Mm. Please write this down if you're taking any kind of notes. We got to learn how to forget. This is the trick with forgetting, Minister Black. Forgetting means I don't just forget the bad I've done. I got to forget the good too. Wow. God help me to pray. I wish I wouldn't wear this bow tie now. Uh, yeah, uh, when, when, when I forget, Sister Bulk Knight, I can't just forget the stuff that I messed up on. I got to learn how to forget the stuff that I did good on. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. This. Because if I don't forget the good, I'll live in my past accomplishment. But God said, that is behind you. So even though it's a good thing, you still ain't going to look back because it's behind you. Well, pastor ain't cussed this year. That's good. But you ought to be in the middle for that anyway. But the point I'm saying is this. We can't continue to build on what we did good five years ago. What are you doing good right now? Yes, sir. That's good. With your sanctified self. Woo. God help me here. When, when, when I am to forget, it means that I am supposed to have no recollection of the past. Mm. Right. Uh, what does that mean, Hinton? Uh, there, there, there have been many of us. Uh, I'll even go with me included. Let, let me preach on me so I can give my brothers a break tonight. Uh, at least on this point. Uh, Brother Foster, when I was in college, uh, I was literally the man. Uh, I've told you this before. I'll tell you again. Uh, I was the man in college. I was a drum line. I was captain the drum line. And there were so many great things that I I was doing. And sometimes, bro, Wales, when I don't catch myself, I find myself reminiscing on my greatness. Mm, that's real. Help me hear the night, Jesus. And God said, well, hit me. If you're going to preach to anybody tonight, to tell them they got to forget the good. Well, guess what? You got to forget it, too. Well, because does that mean I write away from my memory? No, but what it means is I don't allow my flesh to go back to what I felt when I was doing. Wow. Oh, God, help wow. me to teach wow. you tonight. Help me to teach you tonight. Because even though I was saved, there was still a little bit of jankiness in my life. Y'all ain't talking to me. And so because there was some jankiness during my college years, whenever I start reminiscing, on the man that I was, a janky thought might appear. And God said, the more you continue to go back thinking it was good, you bring in jankiness into your name. Wow. Wow. That's heavy. I know I'm helping Rick. You ain't got to say amen. Uh, I'm preaching better than you said amen anyway. So, so the point I'm making is this. Because our God is calling me to forget Brush on, huh? not only do I have to get my heart, forget my heartaches and my disappointments, I've got to forget how good I used to be. Mm. Uh -huh. That's good. <laughs> the Bible puts it this way uh, Psalm 103 and 12 This is also in the scripture It says as far as the east is from the west So far have I removed thy sins from thee so, so God says When I forgive you Check this out I don't even remember what you did wrong Right. Now let, 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 let me help pick you up, Sister Whitney. Let me help pick you up. A lot of the time, we beating ourselves up over stuff God don't even remember. Uh, and the only reason he remembers it is because you just reminded him of it. Yeah. Mm. So when I learn how to forget my failures, God already forgot it. He just wants me to catch up.
accept the way he's already done. Wow. Oh God, help me here. So, so it is that I'm supposed to forget, bro, Barry. It means that I've got to throw out of my mind everything good and bad that I used to do. The Bible puts it this way in Isaiah 43, 25. God says, I, even I am he that blotted out thy transgression and remembereth thy iniquities no more. So God says, I'll not only remove all your stuff, I'll actually blot it out. So why is that encouraging to you tonight? Some of y'all might have smoked weed before you came in here tonight. Yeah, I'll look at the wall. Let me talk to the wall. Some of you might have had a drink on your way in tonight. But God says, because you came into my presence, I've given you an opportunity to be forgiven. Now you got to forgive. That's good. Because God said, I've already cleaned it up from you just because you decided to come. Well, I only came because I wanted to eat breakfast. But because I came, I'm getting this word to let me know that I ain't got to beat myself up in 2016 because who the Son has set free is free in me. Yes, sir. But you've got to embrace your freedom. Yes. Oh, God, we sang this song. Teach us, sir. I just got two men to smile. I know I'm preaching good now. Uh, we, come, we sung this song, Freedom, tonight. Uh, we're told that there were no more shackles and no more chains. Well, let's get out of the words and start living it in our lives. Stop carrying these chains around because you were abused as a child. Out, out, out. Stop carrying these chains around because you had a hard life growing up. Stop carrying these chains around because this is just who I am. God said, no more shackles, no more chains, no Come more bondage. You are free. Come on, sir. Come on, peace, So I've got to learn how to forget. When I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting those things that are behind me. And he says, I've got to reach for those things that are before me. I feel my help coming right here. There's a story in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 14, uh, as it started around about verse number 28, of a man by the name of Peter. The man says, Graham, you can preach this when you get an opportunity. Peter, who as we all know, was one of the more aggressive of the disciples. He was one of the more go-getting, if you will, of the disciples. Well, one day, my sister, it was that Jesus was walking on the water, and Peter began to look out on the sea and he saw this figure that looked like his savior and he says Jesus says don't be afraid it is I Jesus Peter says to Jesus well Jesus check this out if it's you tell me to come to you now I'm talking about reaching forth Jesus tells Peter it's me come on so Peter my brother steps out of the boat mm. when Peter steps out of the boat Sister Black, he forgot what was behind him. Y'all ain't feeling me. Go ahead, go ahead. When he stepped out of the boat, he left behind all the haters and the naysayers that say you a fool for stepping out on faith. Y'all ain't feeling me yet. When it is that I'm reaching for something, that means I'm willing to endure the embarrassment and the shame because I know that my end is greater than my name. Come on, sir. I'm willing to endure being called a fool and a dummy. I'm willing to endure being called all kinds of names because I understand that when I'm reaching, there is a reward. So Peter yes, begins to walk, Ma, and he's walking. And while he's walking, he doesn't remember what's behind him. He's just going forward. But then, bro, well, something begins to happen. Whenever it is that you start making progress, Deja, as a young woman, you might as well expect there's going to be some unforeseen winds that's going to come into your life. And these unforeseen winds don't look like the wind we feel. It looks like people that look just like you. Oh, wow. You trying to go to school, you trying to get your education, but you got Hannah saying, girl, come on, get this party with me. Come on, girl, let's go to the club. You got Hannah, and you got all these negative winds that come in your life. And the Bible says that when the wind begins to blow, come on, man. I want to tell you something tonight, bro, Foster. Come on, preach, Pastor. Cause you to sin. You better learn how to tell your haters to fall back. Because all they're doing is setting up this table for God to bless you. Come on, you. Pastor. And so when it is that the wind begins to blow, the Bible says that Peter began to sin. And what I love about Peter, Minister Black, is this. Yes, Peter didn't try to get all deep and revelated in his prayer. All he said was, Lord, help me. We got to learn. Come on, sir. about the vows and the deeds. That's so good. How much words I know. That's good. I know how to pray just by saying, God, help me. Come on, sir. Help me. Help me. I don't care if you've ever been to Bible study. I don't care if you've ever been to Sunday school. You know how to pray. Lord, you can say, God, help, help me. me. Help me, Lord. My God. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. 
to fall. The Bible says that Jesus brushed out. I like talking to you. You got to show up more often. Uh, when Jesus looked at Peter, the Bible says that Peter stretched his hand out because he would not allow Peter to drown while he was walking. Come on, sir. Somebody ought to wrote that down. That's good. God said, I will not allow you to drown right as long as you're stepping out on faith. That's good. I will not allow you to drown. I'll snatch you out of it. Come on, sir. I never want to tell you. They have an anointing that night. And God knew we couldn't fight it. But uh, when it is that I'm playing spades, my lips are, uh, and I feel like I'm confident in my partner, uh, sometimes I'm willing to push my being. Uh, and because I pushed my being, one of the common lingo we have, Mr. Black, yes, is sir. this might be a stretch. Mm. Oh, God help me. Uh, this might be a stretch because I really don't see it. I, I really don't see it, but I'm reaching on, because I believe I've got enough confidence in my partner that he'll pick up the slack in my life. Somebody just missed the revelation. I've got enough confidence in my partner who is Jesus Christ mm. that even when I'm reaching, I don't see four books, but I'm being four anyway because I got a partner that's got my back and he knows how I feel and he knows I don't feel like Minister Black. He knows I don't feel like DJ Wales. So because he identifies with my flow, he says you can reach all you want with me because I'm gonna pick you up every time. My God. Let me get out of here. I'm almost done. We're at 11 30. Last point I gotta make is he said we first gotta forget, then we gotta reach, but finally we gotta we gotta press. Oh God help me not to get ahead of myself here. We got to press. There's a story in the word of the Lord. I'm closing my Bible. Uh, we're going to call this first close. So Duffer knows I got two more left in there. All right. Uh, this is the first close. So we find in, in the Bible in Mark chapter number five, starting at verse number 24, running down through verse number 35. There is a story about a woman who has an issue of blood. Mm. The Bible says that this woman has suffered many things of many positions. She had given all the money that she could give. She had given her all. And the Bible says she grew none better, but her condition, her condition grew worse. But one day she heard that Jesus was coming. All right. When it is that I'm supposed to be looking forward. Pastors told you you got to forget. She had to forget all the stuff that she had spent her money on. Uh, not only she had to forget, she had to reach, which meant she had to go against what was the norm. But the last thing she had to do was she had to press. Now this is the thing, Ma. Bro, Bob, now you can identify with this. Being a basketball player, uh, we know that when you are playing an aggressive defense, they call that putting on a full court or a half court press. All right, I got some help. Yes, and because the press comes, it means digging is black, that it's supposed to make it harder on the opposition to advance the ball because they're being pressed by the defense. Whenever the press comes, it means that there has to be an opposing force. Uh, without opposition, to help you understand this, there is no press. Uh, I just want to think that bothers me the most, mother, uh, about folk that lie on how they press to come to church. It's not a press, it means how nothing stopping you from getting here. Mm. Y'all ain't feeling me. Uh, it's not oh telling me you press your way when you've been napping all day long. Mm. You took 12 naps before you came to box. 12 naps. And you talking about pastor, it was a press to get here. The devil is a liar. It was so easy for you to get here, it was harder for you to wake up than it was for you to get here. Oh my God. Don't sit here telling me you press it when they no opposition. Oppress me, Sister Fan. There's got to be an opposition against me that makes me be determined to overcome it even when it looks like I can't. And so the woman who had the issue of blood, my brother, the Bible says that she got into the press. Now, the thing that I love about this lady is she didn't even have to identify what the press was. She made her own press. God right. help me here. Uh, how, for pastor, do I make my own press? I make my own press when I tell Jesus how serious my problem is and they will let nobody stop me from getting to it. Yes, sir. That's how I make my own press. I don't like the fact that I got on a three-piece suit 
stop me from coming to the altar. The fact that I got my new hat in, y'all ain't feeling me. Stop me from coming to the altar. The fact that I just put this weed in, stop me from coming to the altar. The fact that I just did my face up. Hey, that's in this verse, Sarah, my Sarah up. The Bible, that, that's what I understand is when I don't allow anything to stop me from getting where I'm trying to go, that's my prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. The Bible says that she came behind and got in the press. But she understood, first lady, that uh, whenever I need to get something from Jesus, uh, it's got to be greater than just me getting to him. I need him to get to me. All right. Uh, I'm going to wrap up. This is second close. When I need Jesus to get to me, uh, that means I need to make myself so available and so visible to him that he can't pass me by. Mm, that's Talk good. About help me here. Uh, have you ever looked at movies uh, where it is that people are putting out these SOS cries? Uh, when they really are in distress, mom, they don't just wave their hands like this. Uh, when they're really in distress, they don't just say, oh, maybe come get me. They start yelling yeah. and screaming. Screaming, flapping on, and getting flashed. Now, when is that going to trickle down to the church? I believe if we ever get radical enough that we actually cry out to God beyond hallelujah, he'll actually show up for you because you made yourself visible to him, not just blending in with the crowd. Yeah. Mm. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. So we understand that we got to press. Let me make sure I ain't close this thing too quick. I'm on my last close. I'm getting out of here. We understand that we got to press. We got to forget. We got to reach, and we got to press. Now, last thing I want to give you is this. The Bible says this in, in Matthew 18 and 7. He says, um, and I'm paraphrasing this one, but 18 and 7 speaks of how, he says, you know, woe, uh, he said, it, 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 must, it, it must needs that offenses must come. Offenses have to come, but woe unto him by whom the offenses come. Bible also says in uh, Psalm 34, 19, it says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Pastor Hinton will never preach to you a fluffy word, which means I'm going to give you all the good and not introduce you to the real. The real behind my forgetting, my reaching, and my pressing is that it's going to come at a price for me. My forgetting, my reaching, and my pressing is going to cost me something. God is not going to allow us to experience all of the benefit and never have gone through any of the burden. So when you go hear these preachers talk about, you know, all, all is well and all is well, but the reality of it is this. You've got to prepare yourself to battle whenever I'm attempting to forget. Yes, sir. Because, Sister Bob Knight, when somebody has hurt me and cut me deep, the last thing I want to do is forget anything they did. Mm. I want to not only remember it, but I want to remind them of what they did every time I see them. Mm. So when the reality of my forgetting shows up, it means the man that violated my body, God help me here, mm. the man that took advantage of my body, I got to be able to look at him and say, you know what, I forgot what you did to me. Maybe I should have ended on the high note when y'all were saying preach and give me all those claps. I should have ended there uh, because the reality, I see the real stuff for my members because y'all y'all used to it, y'all can take it. But the truth of the matter is this. No matter what I attempt to do, if I'm attempting to forget, it's going to be opposition. If I'm attempting to reach, it's going to be opposition. You better believe when you press it, it's going to be opposition. But the great news is this. The Bible says, last scripture I'm going to give you. This is my third and final close. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you yes, than he that is in the world. Thank you. So I